really kind of want to go back to the trade because everybody's always usually so calm and collected after that happens. You know, you're in your presser and you're like, yeah, it's, it's fine. You know, I'm happy to be here. I want the realistic version of how a trade goes down, especially in season, because you've done it before, but not in season like that. And, and there's got to be just like moments throughout that where it's, it's very emotional or intense. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like for the most part, I did my best of uh, trying to stay off my phone. Uh, I let my wife handle that. And she was she was like, oh, so you think we're going to Milwaukee? We're going to the Astros? I said, baby, stay off the internet. They don't know what they're talking about. We won't know until the trade deadline. Um, then everything goes down. And I was, I was definitely happy to be able to share a flight with Juan, talk about it a little bit. You know, obviously tour the stadium, tour San Diego with Juan before we uh, put on the uniform for the first time. And, you know, it's, it's definitely nice having a teammate come across with you as you're, you know, shaking hands for the first time and seeing new faces. Who taps you on the shoulder and says you're going somewhere else or did you get a call? Yeah, I got a call. Uh, I got a call early in the morning. Our GM with the Nats uh, called me uh, probably at 8 o'clock, missed the phone call, woke up at like 9.30, like anything happened. He said something's going to happen here in a, a couple of hours. And then uh, he called back, AJ called, my agent called. Um, and then it was just up and go. Um, you know, my wife and, and baby girl stayed back. Um, we're actually going to, to the Nats Park um, this weekend. So she's going to travel back and try to find a place for us and, and help us get settled out here. But, you know, for the most part, it's just up. We had a flight that night, um, you know, press to the next morning and then a game that night. Let's go back to back in Texas where you grew up. So Friday Night Lights, right? Like you're deep in that territory, but you didn't play football. Tell me a little bit about that, why you didn't play. Yeah, it was all my dad. Um, you know, my dad grew up in Houston, Texas, um, was one of the fastest kids uh, in his high school, went to state for track, he ran the high hurdles, uh, got a scholarship to play football at Southern Louisiana. Um, he was a receiver back then. Um, ended up tearing his knee up twice, um, and the surgery back then wasn't what it is now, so had to recoup from that. and. You know, he got to a point where he's like, if I ever have a son, he's not playing the sport. Uh, he's going to play something else, whether it's baseball or basketball. And, and that's what I played growing up, played a little bit of soccer. Um, and, uh, you know, it made me a switch hitter very early, um, which is, you know, why I'm here today, I think. So uh, definitely thankful for his foresight. And basketball was like your jam, right? Yeah. For how long? Like, tell me about your basketball yeah. career. Because we talked a little bit about it. You peaked in middle school, but still yeah. sounds, sounds good. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I thought I was going to be, you know, number one overall pick in basketball up until high school. Um, you know, I'd play in AAU tournaments and, uh, you know, to find myself, you know, scoring 20 points a game. And as I got older and older, I realized I wasn't jumping as high. I wasn't as tall as the other kids. Um, a lot of kids were a little bit faster than me. Um, found myself going from starting roster to on the bench. Like, I was trying to be sixth man of the year. Um, but yeah, I get into high school. Um, I made varsity as a freshman playing baseball, and I made the freshman team uh, playing basketball. So that was that was the first uh, writing on the wall. Um, and over time, I, I kind of just gave it up uh, my junior year just to focus on baseball. And the switch hitter. So how did your dad do that? Like he would have you just practice on both sides, or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a funny story. I remember my dad sitting on a bucket. Uh, he had a ball and a string. He was like the lazy man, like soft toss. I would hit it and then he would flip me around, change my hands and, you know, I'd hit probably 10 or 12, four or five um, at, at age four or five growing up. And then, you know, from every at bat, um, I'd switch through Little League, um, a little bit of travel ball from about five until 12 or 13. I would switch every at bat because most of the kids back then are throwing right-handed. So I'd get ready, ready at bats and then ready, lefty, and I'd switch back and forth. It was a lot of fun growing up. You kind of evolved it too in the last few years where you tried not to make both swings identical. You were okay with kind of letting them both be their own different swing, right? What kind of difference did that make? It's one of those things where you know, throughout the minor leagues and even in the first couple of years in the big leagues, I, I really tried to find something on one side and make it work on the other side. Um, and I met with David Fries. He got um, picked up, I want to say, from the Angels. Um, he got picked up in spring of 17. Um, we got to know each other. We played for a little bit. Um, we played through 18. And at the end of that season, uh, he told me, look, I, I played with Lance Berkman. He's one of the greatest to ever do it. Um, and he got to a point in his career where he said, look, I'm a right-handed hitter. This, these are my thoughts righty, and I'm a left-handed hitter. These are my thoughts, thoughts lefty. I'm not going to try to mirror the two. And that offseason, I said, you know what, I'm just going to go off and try to get as good as I can righty and as good as I can lefty. And, you know, next year, you know, I'm in the All-Star game in the Home Run Derby. I kind of found myself prolonged my career and you know here I am today. That is so interesting, though. It's really cool. That's, I mean, just that you also were able to work it and find that 
I guess that natural feel for both sides. Because I'm, I'm right side dominant, so uh, I, I try to you know swing with my right side, left handed and right handed, um, and so there's different cues. It's not going to work, um, you know, the same way on, on both sides. Are you the only son for your dad? Because, okay, well, your dad, I mean, just in talking to you, like, he's had a big influence, right? And, and sometimes that can go both ways. Like, it, a kid won't respond to their dad, or but it sounds like it's been very good for you in your life. How has he influenced your life and your career? And yeah, I mean, uh, I, I feel like he's been my, my best friend, my number one supporter uh, from the moment I picked up the bat for the first time and, and until now. You know, he watches every game. He watches every at-bat. Um, you know, if I ever need to pick up the phone and give somebody a call, he's, he's the first person. And, um, where you know if I, I need you know just some ears um, he's he's so positive too I can have an 0 for 15 stretch or a 15 for 15 stretch he'll say the same thing like you got this keep going you're here for a reason um, and this is all a blessing so just enjoy the ride that is really cool I want to go now to your college years or your almost college years which I know you've probably been asked about but so yes you committed to the University of Texas, right? And baseball scholarship. Um, so much so, I thought this was so interesting. You wrote a letter to the commissioner of baseball and it sounded like to teams. Do I have that right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it was virtually for the teams not to draft me. Um, you know, I'm going into my senior year um, and I had so much fun. I, just missed out on the state championship and it got to a point to where I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for minor league baseball. Uh, all my friends are going off to college. I went to high school with Jordan Spieth. He was going to UT as well. Um, and, you know, I thought that all of our friend group could, you know, really grow together um, you know, a few years in, in college. Um, ended up sending out the letter. Um, yeah, like, please don't draft me. I don't want to have to think about numbers or anything like that. I just want to be able to go off to school, and I'll see you guys in a few years. I'll be ready. Uh, I'll be ready then. I actually get a phone call from the Rangers um, draft night, and AJ's in the room. Um, yeah, yeah. So he was, you know, with the, the Rangers um, back then, and, you know, they're calling me like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like, draft me in three years. It'll be a great story. I'll go to UT and then get drafted by the Rangers. Um, end up. Uh, getting passed up, get picked up by the, the Pirates and go off to summer school um, at, at UT and meet some of the teammates there, meet uh, some of the older cats. A lot of guys taking summer classes, getting the uh, uh, workouts in and, and whatnot. And a lot of the seniors are like, JB, like, this is fun and all, but like, uh, the big leagues is the most important thing. This might be your best chance at making it. Um, and, you know, I had some hard talks with my family, hard, hard talks with my friends. We're like, JB, don't do it. We're not even there yet. Um, but I made that decision and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about it. You know, it took me a little bit to get through it, but, you know, here I am in the big leagues today um, and I'm definitely thankful for that. It's fascinating, too, because you were taken by the Pirates in the second round, but really you were a first rounder. They just didn't want to risk it because you had written that letter and everything. But that's also funny about A.J. Preller because there's so many guys on the team that he has either seen in the past, even Juan Soto or anyone from the Dominican, he's seen them and, and remembered them. Did he remember that story too? Oh yeah, um, that phone call right when I got traded, he was like, yeah, I missed out on you, you know, 12 years ago, I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. So uh, yeah, so I was, I was pretty pumped that, that he remembered and that was a crazy story, it was a whirlwind. Um, let's say the trade deadline was weird that whirlwind from going from you know college campus to Bradenton, Florida, like a spring training facility. Uh, it's definitely different, um, but you know I got through it and, and here I am. Yeah, what is that like? Like, can you give us a glimpse? Um, I remember waking up, like having dreams of still being on college campus and like waking up in the dorms of Pirate City and being like, oh, well, it's 6.30, I gotta get going. You know, we have in and out at, you know, eight o'clock game at one that day um, and probably a workout afterwards. It's, it's definitely a grind through the, through the minor leagues, the, you know, 12, 13 hour bus rides across the country. Um, but it's definitely worthwhile. Peanut butter jelly sandwiches, the whole deal, right? Do, do you ever regret, I don't know if regret's the right word, do you ever wish you would have went to college or miss out on that experience? Or I think it took me a couple of years. I think once I got to double A, I understood. Um, you know, I feel like guys that uh, get more opportunities in this game, because everyone goes through slumps, but it, it seems like higher round picks are still thrown into the lineup and the lower round picks really, really have to take advantage of their opportunities so for me to be able to go through slumps and you know understand the game and change positions I went from outfield to first base um, I don't think that would have happened if I went to UT um, you know so it was, it was kind of an, an all-or-nothing decision back then and I think I made the right choice your numbers are really consistent I mean if you look at your numbers in the majors like 
people don't understand sometimes how hard that is for you to put up those above average numbers year after year after year. There was one year, I'll go back to 2020, that <laughs> I'm wondering what happened in that year. Was it just the whole COVID thing and everything? Yeah, it was definitely weird. Um, and I think it was uh, my mindset that if I hit a homer that night, we'd win. And all we had to do was get hot for 60 games to make it to the postseason. Okay. We hadn't done that since the wild card game and the early uh, 2010s, I think it was 13 and maybe 15. So um, I was like, this is our time. If I go off right now, and it, it seemed like the pitchers were like, we'd rather walk this guy than give up even a double. So, uh, you know, swinging a lot of balls, my chase rate went through the roof. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to play the game that way. And I, I think I, you know, I ended up getting traded and I had the exact opposite mentality since then. Like, I'm going to get my hits. If someone makes a mistake, I'm going to hit a homer, but yeah. I'm not going to waste 200 at bats trying to hit 30 homers and only end up with eight. Also, you're coming off your all-star year and that was a career, you know, career numbers for you and everything. So I'm sure too, you come in and everybody has high expectations and things like that. Your consistency though, it, like I said, it's, it's really remarkable. What do you attribute that to? Is that off-season work? Is that fear? Is that motivate? Like, what do you, what do you put there? <laughs> yeah, fear, failure. No, um, yeah, I think it's just, just uh, having a routine um, and, and trusting it. I, I think that, you know, this game, you can hit a ball, score on the nose 10 times and still be out, but you have to trust that you know, in the long haul, your next 100 at bats is going to work out. All I need is 30 hits and 100 at bats, and I'm right where I need to be. So, uh, you know, if I have that mentality after an 0 for 12, 0 for 15 stretch, you know, I can stay the course and, and really trust myself and, and work on trusting yourself uh, when, the, when the going gets tough. And over the years, I've gotten better and better at it, and it's, it's definitely worked out. One of the things Joe mentioned, he was like, whether Josh goes 4 for 4 or 0 for 4, he goes about his work ethic is the same. You know, like you want to get in there and you, you just want to be better and improve every day and, and everything. So are you a tinkerer? Are you someone that, you know, will do 500 swings if, you do, if you're in a slump? Or are you, what kind of guy are you? I'm, I'm more in the weight room. I'll, I'll change things around um, just to work on different fields in the cage. Yeah. Uh, I like medicine ball throws. I like, you know, throwing the ball um, into the wall and like holding a lunge afterwards, trying to absorb the ground, um, you know, it's different techniques techniques, you know, Turkish get-ups, um, different cars and whatnot, I can go into the, the physical side of things, but if something feels good that night, I'll have the same routine the next day, and if something doesn't, I try to correct the feel more so than the result. You know, I can get four hits and have terrible contact, but just get lucky and, and still not feel right and change the routine uh, the, the next day, but in regards to the cage work and, and stuff like that, I have different drills trying to feel different things, but it's vir virtually all in the same arsenal of, uh, of drills that I do um, week in and week out. About the weight room, how, how do you stay in, do you have anything interesting like as far as boxing or as far as anything that you do to kind of stay in shape or that you enjoy doing? Um, there's a, a ton of different things. Uh, I got, have these uh, like movement specialists, they're called Goda, um, that, that I've fallen in love with over the last few years. Adam Fraser actually introduced me uh, to them at the end of 2020, um, and it kind of changed the way I, I viewed uh, working out. Um, so it's a lot of uh, time on the ground, um, a lot of you know sitting crisscross, criss uh, sled pushes. They're big on forward motion, um, not big into like heavy squats. They're, they're big into to lunging and absorbing. Um, weight as you're moving forward, which is you know everything that you're doing in baseball. You're swinging forward, you're throwing forward. So I, I, I really like uh, what they've taught me over the last couple of years, and hopefully it prolongs my career. Any other things that you enjoy besides baseball when you're not in season? Hobbies, interests, things that uh, are important to you? Yeah, I had a, a book club. The last two organizations that I've, I've been with, yeah. So uh, we dove into uh, mental health the last couple of years. We read uh, like The Secret. Um, we read, um, you know, a, a couple other books diving into that realm. But I just had a baby girl. She's seven months old. Um, so I, I think that you know my time's kind of you know taken away from the field now. Um, but you know I'm pumped for it. We'll see what happens next year if I can you know get a little bit more time away, um, but I'm enjoying watching her grow so much and, you know, uh, just seeing her smile when I walk through the door every day. So uh, I think that's that's where my, my time is away from the field. Which is completely understandable. Back up just a touch though, like the book club would be with the the uh, the players or the fans or like how would yeah, you do it? It was with the fans um, and 2020 was all Zoom, but this past year um, I'd actually go, I, I went to like a, it, was, it wasn't a juvenile detention center, but it was um, that the National Guard had a program for kids that 
might be veering towards that direction. Um, and so I did a book club for those kids, invited them to the stadium. They were uh, 16 to 18, had gotten in trouble before and wanted to like rework, uh, reroute the, the route of their life. Um, so read The Secret, you know, the law of attraction, you know, positive energy and all that. Um, had two question and answers where I went to their facility and then they came to ours and got to check out a game. Uh, I think I got three hits that night that they got to watch. We won that game. It was a really cool atmosphere. That is so cool. If you weren't a Major League Baseball player, you would be a... <sighs> my, my, my sister's a professor. My mom's a professor. Um, I, I think I would go into academia. I think that'd be pretty fun. Mm -hmm. My mom's diversity at UT Arlington. My sister is communications at Webster in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Best part about fatherhood, or most surprising part even, about fatherhood? Um, most surprising is the, the capability of getting through your day on such lack of sleep. I, I had no idea that I had that in me, um, but uh, it's, it's all worthwhile. Um, and I, I think the best part is, like I said before, just seeing her smile when I walk through the door. Um, she's very young, but she knows who I am, um, and that means a lot. San Diego, anything that you know or have been here or just have, you know, experience uh, or, or are you looking forward to seeing even? I want to say it was five or six years ago I went to the safari which was unbelievable, you know, fed a giraffe. My mom was freaking out in the little truck or whatever. She's like, I don't want to feed it. Like, what are we doing here? Like, I thought this was a zoo. Um, but, uh, you know, I had a blast doing that. Obviously, the San Diego Zoo was a blast as well. But, you know, it's, there's no excuse but to get outside every morning when the sun comes out. Everyone's happy. Everyone's uh, getting a lot of vitamin D, obviously, and, you know, getting active. So I, I, I love it here. You can take your daughter, you and your wife can take your daughter when she's older to go do that too, the, the, the safari and everything like that. Um, okay, last one, any superstitions or rituals, anything that uh, that you have to do before a game or every day or things like that? Uh, not, not really. I feel like baseball players are known for that. Um, you know, if I get some hits with a pair of batting gloves, I'll keep them on. You know, if I have a bad game, I might change them out. But aside from that, uh, nothing, nothing too crazy. Welcome to San Diego. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Awesome. Thank you as well.